welcome to Prayer Tower Church of God in Christ, Church on the Move for God, here in St. Petersburg, Florida. And we are here live in the building. So if you want to be with us tonight in a live setting, you can come right here. We are in the house. We are taking care of business for the Lord in person. Amen, amen. We see a few of them are coming in right now. Uh, Dr. Brown just came in. Uh, we have um, Sister Herring here. We have um, Sister Boyd here and a few others that just text me and says, are we live tonight? I said, yes, we live and in person. So come on out. 1137, 37th Street South, St. Petersburg, Florida. And we are here to uh, continue in our um, series of the Holy Ghost. We did the journey to Pentecost. We've learned so much in those, um, in those um, lessons about um, Pentecost and what it really meant and how and what it took to get there. Last week we were on um, the different instrumental people that after Pentecost, that the experience of Pentecost and the true understanding of Pentecost, how it affected those who even did not believe in Christianity, did not believe in the Messiah, did not believe in Jesus, the, the, the um, um, begotten, only begotten son of our Lord and Savior, our God. So um, as we continue tonight with this great panel of, of um, um, clinicians, uh, we are here to expound on the word of God, and we're going to continue from last week. Uh, again, we have our assistant pastor, Elder Booker, Minister Davis, and Reverend Boyd here with us. And we are just here so happy to be able to um, rightly divide the word of truth. For the Bible tells us that we should study to show ourselves approved, a work but not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. And I don't think any of these young men <coughs> are ashamed of the gospel, and we know that you aren't either, because you're here every Wednesday, here with us to see uh, what God has for you through the word of God. So as we um, continue tonight, um, I'm going to ask that, um, that, um, that you prepare yourselves, get your Bibles and different things out, get ready for the Word. And before we go into the Word tonight, I want to um, give a, um, a covering um, invocation. Um, invo invocation is to invoke the Spirit of the Lord into wherever we are. And we want to invoke His presence, not just in this house, but in your house. We want you to be on the same page spiritually and mentally as we are because we know that the enemy will come to divert. He will come to deceive. He will come to, 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 um, to disguise certain things that will cause you to not get the essence of what we are delivering tonight through the manifestation and through the interpretation and revelation of our Savior. Um, as I said, on, I think, multiple times during our studies, that there is translation that's translating the word of God from language to language. Some languages, it may, um, it may constitute a, a different verb, a different adjective, a different consonant for certain um, ideas, certain um, elements, certain um, time set settings, and different things like that. But the word of God is still the word of God. Translated. But then after translation, you have interpretation. And interpretation is taking the word of God and getting the interpretative um, um, no notion or the actual um, what God wants for you in that specific scripture or word. And then there is revelation. After God has interpreted his word to you, then he may give you a revelation of what the word is that he has for you. God may speak to me through, through um, John 3.16 in, in one manner. And it may mean something to me because of maybe what I've been going through or what I've, I've had to accomplish. But then you may read that same scripture, those same words, the same parentheses, the same um, 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 notes that are in John 3.16, but God may give you a different revelation. Somebody say revelation. revelation. Of what the word means to you. God is an omni-God, omnipresent, but at the same time, he is a, um, a singular God. He judges and works with each of us one-on-one. -on -one. The saints used to say you have to work out your own soul, what? Salvation. Salvation. Yeah, I know some of y'all knew exactly what I was talking about. 
we come into this world by ourselves. And even when twins, they say, well, twins come in, they don't come in by themselves, but they come one at a time. <laughs> so they killed that, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, who, who was in the Bible where we see, um, 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 who was that, Ishmael? Is that the twins? Who was that? Um, no, Jacob not. and Esau. Esau. And Jacob. Esau. Jacob. And Jacob. Um, when they were coming out, what did the Bible say that? His brother grabbed him. Heal, man. Got him by the heel. Yes. Like, wait, where, where you going? I want to be first. He was already trying to steal his birthright from birth. <laughs> so, we're coming. <laughs> you know I'll be thinking. Y'all forgive me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, he, he was trying to steal his birthright from birth. So, even in that instance, it was still one at a time. They were coming out. Amen. One at a time. So God sees us when we were born into this world. He sees us singularly. And when we come before him in the judgment, he's going to look at us singularly. So what do we need? How do we express? How do we find ourselves being into a place that is pleasing to God when we come before him at judgment? It is because once we receive the gift that he has given us, that gift automatically clothes us to a place of acceptance. Without the Holy Ghost, without the indwelling of the power and the gift of God, then he can't receive us as he should. The Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. Mm. If we were to break that down tonight, it would bring us right back to Acts telling us that we need the Holy Ghost. Why would Jesus himself tell us that we need this gift before he comes again? We have to acquire it before he comes again. For the dead in Christ shall rise first, right? Mm -hmm. But it's Amen. only by the unction of the power of the Holy Ghost, the gift that God has given. Why do you think Jesus went to, the, to, 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 to hell and to the grave to minister, to give them an opportunity to receive the gift? I could go into a whole deep thing about the Holy Ghost and it being um, given the promise being given to them of the access of the Holy Ghost before the day of Pentecost. If you were to really research the Bible, and I know these theologians have, the Holy Ghost has been present throughout the Bible from, 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 from day Amen. one. Amen. It was just given the opportunity to man to receive it on Pentecost mm -hmm. because they had, there, there was enmity between God and man, and there was no way to get that back without the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. So as we endeavor to, 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 to strengthen and to, to, to build your understanding and your knowledge of the Word of God so that you will be able to rightly divide the Word of God, and in this instance of dividing, it is not separating it, it is actually bringing it together. Dividing in the sense of looking at each word, taking it apart, understanding it, because when we understand it, the Word comes back together. I know that's a, that's a crazy mathematical. Amen. Um, <laughs> Sister, Sister Harry probably like, you can't divide and add at the same time, but God can. Yes, he can. Amen. <laughs> Prove it. Prove it, Pastor. Prove it. How can he divide and add at the same time? Well, he took two fish and five loaves of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he divided it and wow. added to it at the same time. Y'all yes. <laughs> don't mess with me tonight. <laughs> I'm under the anointing. <laughs> but this is the word of God. That, that, is, that, that is why you study the word of God. Because the word of God cannot be, um, 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 it cannot be, um, what's the word that they use um, uh, when they try to contradict? The word of God can't be contradicted. Even many have tried, but all have failed. <laughs> Catch that. Many have tried, but all have failed. Because the word of God will stand on its own. The Bible tells us. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. Y'all know that y'all can finish Amen. it. Word but my word is going to stand. That's right. The word of God is going to stand. So what is your best bet? Your best bet is to stand on the word. That way you right. know that you won't ever fall. Amen. 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 So let's get to the word tonight. We're going to go back. Um, I think we were in um, chapter, in, we're going to be in Acts again. We're, we're going to work this book of Acts because this book of Acts is almost, it is almost a foundational uh, premise for um, we who love God, we who have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, 
and we who want and desire to be in his will through the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In our yearly, um, at the beginning of the year, we said that this year is let the indwelling of the Holy Ghost be in you in 2022. Mm -hmm. Y'all got that? The indwelling of the Holy Ghost be in you in 2022. Because when we, if we all, can you just imagine if mm -hmm. all of us had the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be talking about one another. We wouldn't be doing, bite, biting one another. We wouldn't be, 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 be so harsh to one another. We would have the love of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is God. The God is the triune God. And if God's so loved, then the Holy Ghost got to love too. So if you got that in you, then you got love. Amen. Somebody put that in. You got love. <laughs> was that song, there, uh, was it Rita Franklin or was that, um, no, that was um, 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 Natalie, um, Natalie, Nat, Nat, not Nat King Cole. What her daughter, his wife, his, his daughter was? Um, Natalie Cole. Natalie Cole. When she said, I got love on my mind. That's what you ought to have. <laughs> when God comes into your heart, that's what you should have on your mind. You should have love on your, high, on your mind at all situations and in all places and at all times. You should watch the way you talk. Watch the way you speak. Watch the way you do things. Even when you consider doing things, the love of God should, 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 should be so prominent that you would do something that's loving versus something that's going to cause um, infractions, that's going to cause um, um, malice, that's going to cause hatred or anger or even um, hurt because the opposite of love is hurt, not hate. Everybody thinks it's hate, but it's hurt because when you don't love someone, the first thing they do is cry. And why do they cry? Because they hate you? No, they cry because they're hurt. I know I just met somebody else mm -hmm. up again. I'm sorry, but I don't get interpretation. Uh, I don't get translation. I get interpretation, and God gives me revelation. A lot of you all that are being hurt and being hated, the thing is, is that hate causes you to hurt because nobody wants to be hated. I know somebody say, baby, I want you to hate me. Do you hate me, baby? No, you say, do you, do you love me, baby? Never seen nobody talk about, hey, bro, you hate me, man? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, bro. No. <laughs> Give me some depth. Yeah, man, you my, you my dog. I hate you. <laughs> no. <laughs> we love. And if they tell you you hate you, the first, the first um, um, thing that happens with you is not related hate, but it's hurt. And hurt will evolve into disappointment. It will evolve into to, to malice, and then you will become hateful for the fact of someone hating you. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is a product of love, and that love comes from our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ through the manifestation of him sending the gift. Let's get into the word. All right. Come on, Dr. Boyd, bring us up to date, because you, you finished last week, so if you stop, you're going to start. <laughs> I don't know, I think we're on the ninth chapter. Are uh, we on uh, 32? Verse 32. 32, okay. Acts um, 9. All right. At the 32nd verse. That's where we are. Somebody type that in. <coughs> right, verse 32, okay. Should I start reading it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. And this is not the Amplified? I can do either one. <laughs> uh, whichever uh, one you choose. It's the same yeah, word. The Amplified is, now as Peter was traveling throughout the land, he went down to visit the saints, God's people, who lived in Lydia. Mm -hmm. uh, there he found a man named... Um, Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years and was mm. paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. Mm. Immediately, Aeneas got up. Then all who lived in Lydia and the plains of Sarah saw what had happened to him, and they turned to the Lord. Verse 36, now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, 
Mm -hmm. She was rich in acts of kindness and charity, which she continued, continually did. During that time, it, it happened that she, got, she became sick and died. And when they had washed her body, and they laid it in, in an up, upstairs room. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, come to us without delay. Mm -hmm. So Peter got up at once and went with them. When he arrived, they brought him into the upstairs room, and all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing him all the tonics and robes that Darkus, which is Lydia, right? Mm. Uh, Tabitha, uh, one is in Greek and one is in Hebrew, Hebrew or Aramaic, something like that, um, used to make while she was with them. But Peter sent them all out of the room, kneeled down and prayed. Then turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and helped her up. And then he called in the saints, uh, the people of God, and the widows. And he presented her to them alive. Mm -hmm. This became known all over Joppa. And many came, became, came to believe in the Lord that is to adhere to and trust in and rely on Jesus as Christ and Savior. And so it was that Peter stayed in Joppa for many days with Simeon uh, Tanner. I think the interesting part here is this is after mm -hmm. he got the Holy Spirit in the upper room. Now he's out here performing these acts just like Jesus did with mm -hmm. the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, Raising people from the... That's to give everybody pause. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. you know... Um, a lot of times when we study the Bible, we just... Because we don't have in-depth study, we think that Jesus was the only one who raised people from the dead. But not so. No. You reading it right there? <laughs> Amen? Right. But he couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit. Couldn't do it without that. Because if you, if you, if you, if you, you look at it, before, before Christ, there were some that were raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. But it was by the sacrifice and them being in a place that they gave honor to God and God was showing himself prevalent and strong in their lives that this was happening. Jesus came, like he said, I didn't come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill it. So when Jesus came, he did the same things that were already happening, but he did it in a different way. He did it in his father's name. May I add, I think a big distinction is, is <coughs> the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was given to individuals, mm -hmm. kings of Israel, prophets of Israel um, that would do what God wanted them to do, deliver messages to the mm -hmm. king, deliver messages to the people about what God wants, God's will. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus comes, now we, we all have access yes. to the Holy Spirit. That's it right there. That's the key point right there. Before the, the, the power of God was dispensed on certain ones because they were in a certain place. That's why you had priests that went into the holies of holies and gave sacrifices unto God and then they were able to come out and bless the people. But now we don't have to go into a ceremony because now we have an advocate that is our own. That we, can, we don't have to pray to priests. We don't have to bring alms to priests anymore. We don't have to go through all these, we don't have to, 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 to put up animals to, to make sure that they're worthy to be sacrificed because the ultimate sacrifice has already been given and it is a living sacrifice as he in turn tells us to be. We are to be living sacrifices for him because he is a living sacrifice. Jesus is not dead, but he is still the sacrifice that God sees and um, um, offers uh, penance too for sin on our behalf continuously, perpetually. Yeah, like when he was crucified and the, the veil was ripped from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. granting us access directly to God the Father without uh, um, going to the priest, like you said. Right. You know, uh, and the priest going in the paint and, and, and praying and, and, and doing the burnt offerings for all, for the, for the Hebrew nation. Yes. Um, and 
I just, I just, I, just, I don't think we, the, the the gravity of that act of Jesus dying on the cross, the veil being ripped, the upper room, the Holy Spirit coming in and giving us access to and the power to do what Jesus said. We would do greater things mm -hmm. than this. Yes. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, this was different. This was totally different. Mm -hmm. See, this was a, this, this was God's, if you can imagine from the beginning of God, mm -hmm. God had a plan. Mm -hmm. He had a plan. His plan didn't get established to the fullest until Christ was manifested. Mm -hmm. Right, right. All right? Christ's plan was to call men out of the world. Mm -hmm. All right? But then what he did was he had them 12 boys, we call apostles, mm -hmm. set them aside. Those ones had the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Other folks didn't have the Holy Ghost. All the ones that had the Holy Ghost were them, them 12 boys. <laughs> All the ones had was them. They had the sign gifts. All the ones had was them. No one else had it but them. Them 12 boys established what God called, known as the church. Mm -hmm. That's what it was about, see, the church. Mm -hmm. So what God is doing is, see, he's, he, he's always had, had, had his plan to save man. His plan is through the church. Not just us walking down the street saying I'm saved, mm -hmm. but the church. See, not, not the building of a, of a, of a church, I don't mean the building now, but a called out people that have mm -hmm. the spirit of God dwelling in them. Indwelling. That, that's, what, that's what it started from that. That's why the purpose of this is not so much as just uh, 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 us identifying with what they were doing because we can't identify what they did because the purpose is totally different. Yes. Mm -hmm. Purpose is totally different. See, see they, had, they had sign gifts until a certain time. After a period of time, sign gifts was gone. As in Paul, when, when and Paul had, had his friend that, that was sick. Paul didn't heal, he couldn't heal his friend. He, he left him there sick. Because the sign gifts was gone at that time. Mm -hmm. You know? Because God did the things, he did the things, what, what he wanted done. He wants to draw mankind to the church. That's our thing is to extend his hand of the church. But see, we are busy as a, a people, for some reason, we've gotten kind of in our own things. It made church should be an entertainment center, yeah. a social club, or more of a, a, a everything else but a church. Mm -hmm. We've done that. In the last few, we've done it last year, we've done it in the last year, we've done that part very well. So then it's this guy so much where everybody in the church now say they're saved because they go to church because yeah. the, the message is being tainted. Yes. See, but the message they had in, in the, uh, um, Acts, the resurrection. That's all they preached was the resurrection. It's amazing now. Mm -hmm. you know, think about this part. They were of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. They were around Job. They knew Joe, they knew Ruth, they knew all those other all parts of that. Okay. We are New Testament. But our preaching is trying to uh, entertain folk with messages of different, what them guys did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not the resurrection no more. We teach other things that tend to entertain people. In the meantime, we have a, a, a people of church. Yeah, emotionalism. Yes, that's not being filled. And we wonder why. If we can't get them to stand up after we holler and yeah, all that, lean back and all of that. Because if, if if we're not preaching the gospel. We're just not doing it. Jesus ain't never hooped. <laughs> we're not doing it. That's, that's, our, that's, our, that's our struggle. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we've fallen from the church so much that, and, and we've made other things from it. Mm -hmm. but, but these guys was preaching, like, like Peter, like you said, raised, raised this guy from the dead. Paul did the same thing. They raised him from exactly. the dead. They did that. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. But, but uh, we have a different mission. But it's still about Jesus Christ. So what you're saying, I, I'm, I got questions. <laughs> I got questions. Is the church, church less effective now? Not the true church. No. No, see, the church, the church should be more effective because, see, he, he, he tells us, our, our message is to preach uh, see, notice now, in the, in the beginning, they gave sound uh, signs and things to help the people understand because it's new. Mm -hmm. We have the new, new Testament. We can read and see that part. Our mission is preach and teach what? Sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Emphasizing that part. Jesus Christ. That's our message. See, don't, you have to be able to entertain, entertain nobody. Mm -hmm. 
Don't perform for them. Teach them the truth about Jesus Christ. That's where the hope is. That's where life is. But we are steady trying to, trying to flim, flam people to get paid for it because we like the entertainment. We like what it presents to us mm -hmm. as a people. We, we've allowed ourselves to be, be blinded by Satan and, use, and using us tremendously in a world that needs us so much now, mm -hmm. even more than now than it was before. Yes, truly. And I agree with you on, on you know, the entertainment and the social club and um, I, 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 the charismatic I think, movement. I, this, this is me, you know, Jeremiah one and one. <laughs> that, um, aside from that, this feel good church, mm. I guess, been misrepresented. Yes. By mm. yes. so many for so long. Yes. That people are not attracted to the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because they see the, the messiness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of the people in the church. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is, like, I, 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 I go back to how Jesus did it. Okay. Right? Serve the need, then the message. Yes. You're hungry. It's hard to minister to someone yes. when they're hungry. Right. Mm -hmm. Give them a sandwich. <laughs> Right. And then Keep the attention. tell them, okay, right. about Jesus and what he did for me, right? That's the testimony. <clears throat> yes. What Jesus did for me, he can do for you, and your life will be better for it. Receive the Holy Spirit, get access to everlasting life. Yes. Um, I think that's where the modern-day church is kind of gone astray. Yes. Is, is we're not, we're just telling people, oh, just, just believe in Jesus and everything's going to be all right. You know, well, he's still hungry, and he's still, <laughs> and we ain't give him no food. Yeah, yes. Um, and, 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 and like I said previously with this uh, convenient Christianity, I'm a Christian when it's convenient for me to be a Christian. I, I can't minister to you because I'm too busy. I can't serve because yeah. I'm too, I got too many other things to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we just schedule an appointment with me tomorrow. And we, we, we'll talk about it. Right. Okay? Um, or a kind word, a listening ear. I mean, you'd be surprised how many little things you could do to change, to help encourage people Amen. that are lost. Amen. Um, and, and instead of being caught up in all the business. Amen. But, but I think, again, I heard you say that we are convenient Christians. So, if you want to elaborate on the word being a convenient Christian, which you did already, when it's convenient, then I do what the word of God says. But if you go back to the topic, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is indwelling within you, mm -hmm. help me to understand and it's really indwelling within you. The word indwelling simply means it lives, it abides. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's where it lives and, abides. and that's where it abides. Yes. And I also read somewhere, helping to understand that the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, it will ponder you. It will ponder you to do right. So it's hard for me to be uh, a Christian when it's convenient to me. I have to be a Christian 24-7. Amen. Mm -hmm. I have to love God 24-7. So when I see a man or woman going astray, I've got to tell them the truth regardless of the circumstances. Whether you get paid the tithing, whether etc. etc. If the Holy Spirit is indwelling within you, it will push you, it will compound you to do right. I people say the word of God will constrain you. Mm -hmm. It will constrain you to do right. So even an enemy. How can you really love an enemy 
when you know that's your enemy. You can't do it on your own. That's why a lot of people fail because they don't have the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you want to have willpower. So willpower. But willpower only lasts for so long. But when the Holy Ghost is inside of you and it's indwelling within you, it'll make you do some things you never thought you could do. Amen. And that's like loving your enemy. Yeah, but the Amen. Holy Spirit is also um, a gentleman. It's a person. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, God, it, he doesn't force you. Mm -hmm. No. He suggests. Act right. <laughs> right? So there's an there's a in, 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 in eternal battle between your, 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 your ego, your pride, you know, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You have to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit when it's guiding you to do what you don't want to do. I don't want to love everybody. Okay? <laughs> okay? God says I'm supposed to. Yeah, you got so to. So I have to submit yeah, my to will to his. to his will mm -hmm. so I can love everybody. And I think that's what, in that, in, I know the, the convenient Christian term is, you know, it's kind of kind of oxymoron. How can you be a convenient Christian? You are a Christian or you're not a Christian. But when you're not letting the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you in all aspects of your life, you pick and choose mm -hmm. when you want to follow the Holy Spirit or you're, let me say it like this, naive <laughs> to the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. You're, 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 it's, it's like you're, you're, it becomes dull. You're like, okay, I, I know, but I'm, I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. Right? And, 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 it, and I'm just, it just happens. I don't do right all the time. Mm, none of us I don't do. do right all the time. I know, and I got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells me, you ain't doing right. And I'd be like, okay, whatever, okay. You know, I'm a, cause, cause now because I'm in my feelings, mm. or I'm in, and, and, you know, somebody that hurt my feelings or said something that upset me, and I just react. Instead of responding, the Holy Spirit would temper me. It says, close your mouth and just hear them and, and respond in a kind way. So what did I do to upset you? Mm -hmm. You know, you have to do it out of love because if you retaliate and that's where, you know, so you got these fighting Christians. People in the church, we're fighting, we're mm -hmm. backbiting, we're backstabbing, and, you know, we don't like each other. You get on my nerves. <laughs> That's right. So, right. Okay, just keeping it real, and we all in church and got the Holy Spirit, and then the outside world sees that. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost is a keeper, mm. not a maker. Mm -hmm. He suggests you have to decide. Just food for thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did y'all catch that? Don't worry, I'm gonna send it to you. I'm gonna write it. Right <laughs> I'm going to send it out there so, it, so it's, it's in there. The Holy Ghost is a keeper. The Bible tells us that he, he I'm going to send a comforter back to keep you until the day that I return. He ain't going to make you stay saved. He ain't going to make you do right. But he's going to suggest that, Ricky, you really shouldn't go over there because you know that that's going to be a conflict and direct disobedience of what the Word of God says. Right. You've studied and you know you shouldn't. Now you can say, okay, I'm glad you made that suggestion, but I'm grown. <laughs> I'm a grown man. Do what I want to do. And the Holy Ghost is going to say, go right ahead. And you go out there and get yourself in trouble and then come crawling back. The Lord, help me. And the Holy Ghost being the gentleman that he is, he says, I will advocate for you. Mm -hmm. Do you know the Holy Ghost advocates for us? Who does he advocate to? He advocates to Jesus because Jesus sent him. He advocates to Jesus. Say, Jesus, this Negro, I'm this person <laughs> done messed up again. And I know that the, the, the I know that the thorns, the, 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 the piercing in your side and your hands are throbbing now because they yet crucify you again. <clears throat> mm. But because I am supposed to be the keeper of them mm. and the one that comforts them, I've got to comfort them to let them know that through repentance that you will still be the sacrifice availing for them. 
the blood that you shed will still be strong and strict enough to receive their repentant heart and give them full repentance. So, Even though they didn't overrode me. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit doesn't give up on you? No. But we give up on oh. one, one, one of the struggles, see, is that part that we, we play because we, we lazy. Mm -hmm. See, God tells us, learn, take, learn of me. Mm -hmm. All right, that means we have to be studying, attending things that, that, that involves him. We don't do that part. On, 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 see, we, we, we'd rather be Sunday Christians. Ooh. You know, <laughs> come on Sundays, then uh, I'm on a time on. frame. So when it gets past a certain time, I got to go. Because <laughs> I got to go and, and do this and do that part. Uh, so we have this part that we have, class, and then it limits our, go. our growth, see? So then when, when challenges come in our lives, <coughs> we, we start making decisions based on the way I feel. Mm -hmm. And not realizing, God, see, you're not in the feelings because God said, I, I paid for you. I bought you with the price. You belong to, you belong to God. Mm -hmm. So our mindset should be how my actions should please God and my thoughts mm -hmm. should please God. So when the, when the devil brings those other things to my mind, I should readily be able to cast them aside because it doesn't fit well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't, it doesn't make me feel like I need to be doing these things. But if I'm not in the scriptures, learning of God, I might do anything. Mm -hmm. Then I start uh, having to do, uh, come back later on and say, I repent. But the trouble is, we start being Sunday Christians. That's our struggle. No, no Bible study, mm -hmm. no prayer, no Sunday school. All those things we have in church that's, that's there for us to be able to learn from, mm -hmm. we're not part of those things until we feel like it. And we come there, we go late when we come. And we don't have good study habits, so we don't stay at home. Mm -hmm. So how are you, you gonna know what the words say? That means I'm relying on what the man on TV say. Mm. He has another agenda sometimes of what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm not careful say I find myself a watered down Christian. I'm just going through the motion. I just go to church. He can't depend upon me. I'm not equipped. But would I be correctly in saying before a Christian do anything the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, will speak to that individual spirit. And as you just indicated, right. or tell them, you shouldn't do this, Amen. or you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Now, the big question is, I want to hear say this the right way. Okay, I will. The big question is, helping you to understand the different in your conscience and the Holy Spirit, they both can't be the same because every man has a conscience, but a wild animal react on instinct. Mm -hmm. Would I be correctly in saying that? <laughs> now my question to the panel is, <laughs> the different in conscience which every man has and the Holy Spirit. Both of them speak to you. Isn't that correct? Mm. So, how do you overpower one? When your conscience speak to you or when the Holy Spirit speak to you? Uh, I'm gonna somewhat answer that question because every man has a conscience, but every man don't have what? Holy the Holy Spirit. So what speaks to a man who don't have the Holy Spirit is his conscience. But a man with the Holy Spirit has a conscience and a Holy Spirit. So help me in the that one. Well, here it is. Y'all want me to do it? Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God gave man Free will. Free will. Free will is a, uh, coincides with your conscience. At, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's go back to Adam and Eve. God had given them free will. free will. And when he gave them free will, then he told them what his will was. Mm -hmm. And then he gave them guidance. And then he gave them directions. And then he told them 
the consequences of their directions. Conscious mind told them what they should and shouldn't do. And until an outside entity came in to try to convince them different from what their conscience already knew, they knew the good, they actually, see that's how Satan twists stuff around. He said, if you eat of the fruit, you're gonna know about good and evil. They already knew about good and evil because God had told them, don't eat that because that trouble, that is going to be disobedience to me, I'm about. telling you, and you will die. If I'm living, that's a good thing. If I'm dying, mm, that's a bad thing. So they knew the difference between good and evil. Satan came to twist it around, which he still does, because he only tells, um, like, this new thing that he got, um, 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 no, um, virtual truth. What? Hmm. What? Hmm. Half truth. There is, it is either a true or it's a lie. And Satan lied to them, but he forgot to add in the fact. He, and even he did. He said, you will not surely die. 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 So what is surely? So you mean I'm not going to half die? How can I half die? So they knew the, the difference between right and wrong and good and evil because they understood that this serpent was not. But because of their conscience and overriding the fact some, there are some that will contradict the fact that Adam and Eve possess the Holy Ghost. No, it says, let us make man in our image. That includes the Holy Ghost. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can't take half of God and put into me. So they understood because before sin came, sin, what, what sin did, sin separated us from the power and the strength and the, 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 um, the third part of the Godhead and from the salvation of who Jesus was. But we had was the life of God that he spoke into existence. When he breathed into us, what we kept was his breath, but we lost the ability of who God was. That's why man had to sweat. Man didn't sweat before, because God don't sweat. God always cool. Man didn't hurt, he didn't bleed. He didn't need bandages. He didn't have broken limbs. If, if Adam probably fell off a cliff and hit his head, his head wouldn't bleed because he was God. He was supernatural in a natural body. But because of sin, sin took away from them. That's why he said you will not surely die. But what they died to was the nobility and the power and the supernatural entity that was God. It was taken out of them. And now they didn't have it. That's why they saw themselves as naked. Because before, it did, it, those frail things did not bother them because there was no need for it. The evilness of what God said was in the tree, certain wisdom some of us don't need. Because knowledge will make you crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. I know a whole bunch of people that got PhDs and DDDs and they up there at Chattahoochee right now. Because they done lost their mind. Because they're too smart for their own self. Sometimes I regular, I regular, I just, regular, just let me be regular. I, I'm all right. I'm good. If I can, if I don't know something, I'll look it up. I can Google it. <laughs> Let me uh, add to that that will, the free will. Yes. So we have to will our will to line up with God's will. Yes. Your conscience mind, your free will has to line up with God's imminent. Intentional will. I'm going to do what God says I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Regardless of what, <laughs> what my conscience says, mm -hmm. right? That's what we're talking about. <clears throat> but it won't happen like that. It don't happen like that? It won't do that. No. Nope. The Bible says, see, man desires to please himself. Mm -hmm. That's man's desire to please me. They turn me the street, I'm going to get me me. Yes. But, and uh, that, right? and, and that, that, that's man. And that came after sin. That's man. Mm -hmm. See, the, the difference is cross. That makes a difference. The cross. Because what God does, see what cross does is, cross will nudge you. Because God loves you. Mm -hmm. What God will put things in your, in your path to bother your mind. Well, some grandmother must, grandmother must say a long time ago, you go to church one day, they're talking about you in the church, from the pulpit. That same word of taking, twist you around, make you start doing little things you didn't want to do. That same, that's what God does. Mm -hmm. See, God had to change, man won't change man. Mm. That's what happened to us today, see. See, what God did was, he put his whole package for man to go to heaven, 
in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not on man's ability. Because man's smart, he's smart, he's too smart. Man is cunning. He de he's deceiving. All in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So what, what man must do is get to the point to realize, I can't do it. I tried my way, I can't do it. But then man thinks then he starts going to church. Not the answer. Because mm -hmm. churches that got tainted. Like they, they start God's doing, they start doing things in church that you didn't do. That's it. See, it's the word of God. See, it's the gospel that makes a difference. Not going to church. Be the church. That's the difference. But the word of God must come forth in the church. That's the difference. You, you got to have the word of God coming forth so it can convince and convict man's mind. Mm -hmm. I'm doing wrong. But in mind, that's what God said. He says, let this mind yeah. that is in what? Me. In you. Yeah. This mind that is what? Christ Jesus. Be, yes. Let it be in you. Yeah. Christ's mind has to be in us. Yes. When Christ's mind is in us, then we are not us anymore. Amen. We are him. That's right. That's the transfiguration of yes. the spiritual man versus the physical man. It has to be. We're going to always be physical. It has to be okay. that. All right. How do I get the mind of Christ? Good question. But That's getting question. the mind of Christ, the only way you could get the mind of Christ is accept Christ. And once you accept Christ, to be your Lord and Savior by reading the Word of God, you begin to think like God. You begin to follow His commandments. I don't think you would ever have a hundred percent up a book. You're gonna mess up. <laughs> I don't think you would ever have a hundred percent of the mind of Christ because His mind. It's just as far as the east is from the west. So what we do, the doctor said it earlier. He said that Jesus Christ already have within himself for us to follow to get to heaven. I don't know if those are the exact way he said it, but the only way we can get to heaven is to follow uh and do what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. Love your enemy. Do right unto those that despitefully use you, et cetera, et cetera. That's the mind of Christ. And we take on that mind daily until we hear the voice, we are done, thy true and faithful servant. So I yield the floor. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going I'm to I'm jump in. The mind of Christ. I think, like uh, the other boys mentioned, we're too smart. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're too smart trying, trying to figure all out. And so smart think, you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, to simplify this mind of Christ, as you were saying, studying what, how Jesus lived and how he interacted with people. Um, but when you go back and he says, you keep these two commandments mm -hmm. and you keep them all. Love right? Love your enemy. Love God with all your heart, mind, mm -hmm. body, and soul, mm -hmm. you know, and love your enemy as you love yourself. So, I think in our day and age, there's not enough, we don't love ourselves. And I mean, this is what I have to do. Sometimes when I'm in my mind thinking about my issues and stuff going on, I'm tearing myself down. And I have to say, no, what does God say about you? I have to apply God's opinion of me has to supersede my opinion of me or mm -hmm. anybody else's opinion mm -hmm. of me. Self-love. God loves me. God thought I was worth dying for. God thought I was worth all the things he did in this book to get me in back in right standing with him. He went through a lot <laughs> to... To, and, and make it personal. It's you know, make it personal about what did God go through to get to Jeremiah. Now that's him. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had to go. He went through how many generations to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Thirty-three years to Jesus to the cross, death, burial, resurrection, Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, 
just so I can have a conversation with him. Yeah. So I can have a relationship with the Father. So I'm thinking got... God thinks I'm pretty valuable. Oh yeah. <laughs> we 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 we, uh, we we interacting in in uh, in our Bible studies. Uh, we have some here. We have some online. I'm just pulling up some lines. We have um, some of our um, listeners. They they're saying um, uh, they're giving us very good good um, comeback. Uh, one says. Um, uh, Sister Kimberly says, um, let me find it again. She was saying that um, God's word is finite. His, our, our minds are finite. Mm. But yeah. God's word is infinite. Yeah. Sin causes division. And we already know that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have uh, one of our listeners says that um, God wants us to study for ourselves and learn of him. Mm. Now, that's good. Now, I want y'all to go to 2 Corinthians 2. And nine, uh, we're, we're still on talking about the Holy Ghost now. We haven't left, we, have, we are not off track. We're on track because when we learn of who God is and the entity of who the Holy Ghost is, the Holy Ghost is not an it, it's a person, the third God person, the triune God. Second Corinthians 2. <coughs> 2. And nine. Second Corinthians two and nine. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgive it, for your sakes forgive I it in the person of Christ. Remember we're talking about. Um, our understanding of who we are, our decisions, mm. our obedience between right and wrong, good and bad. If we are conscious or making unconscious decisions. Now, 11th verse, this is the kicker. Y'all y'all highlight this. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. And that's what Dr. Board is saying. The world, Satan has gotten ahead of us. Mm. He's gotten an advantage on the children of God. That's sad. When the enemy, which we are supposed to be more powerful through the understanding and through the anointing and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, we should have power over him. The Bible tells us that we should put our foot on his head. Mm -hmm. Bible, even back in Genesis, says that, that the woman will crush his. That's right. It's he, he the one woman. Yep. Right? That's right. So why have we allowed the enemy to rise up and have advantage over us who are we are supposed to have advantage over him? I tell you why. I got a scripture. It says it right there. I got a scripture. Okay, let me let me let me, let me finish this. Okay. We'll come back to that scripture. Don't, don't let me go. Okay. Furthermore, it says, um, um, advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That's right. Right? Amen. We may not want to agree with it, but the fact is we know. 12th verse, final verse. No, go to 13. 12. Um, uh, where um uh, Furthermore, when I came to Taurus to preach Christ, Christ's gospel, and, and, and a door was opened to me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit because I fought not tar, 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 um, Titus, my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence unto Macedonia. What he's trying to say here is we'll go, we, we'll, we'll be all night if we really go into that. But he's saying that sometimes you got, I ain't got no, I ain't got no issue with, with my brother. But it's more work to be done other than right here in the church. Amen. I got to go to Macedonia because there's someone who don't understand, someone who's falling away, someone who is not in the knowledge of what I've been teaching and what God has revealed to me to give to them. So I got to leave you, bro, and go and teach the gospel. Because God will, will give each of us our assignments, like you said, the disciples That's had their right. assignments. Right. Yeah. And once your assignment is done, yeah, you don't just stop. You go back and say, what's my new assignment? Because right. God never is like of assigning you things to do <coughs> for the body of Christ. Even in Bible study, even in our lessons, even in our communicating with our neighbors, our loved ones, our sons, our daughters, our cousins, our friends, our wives, our husbands. God always has assignments for us. Amen. But we've got to be in a place to be able to receive the assignment. Amen. Go ahead, give me that scripture. 
scriptures of First First Corinthians, fifteenth chapter. We in this Corinthians tonight. <laughs> the first four verses. Somebody got it? I got it. All right, go ahead, read. I read the King James. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, mm -hmm. which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye, ye are saved. If ye keep in memory that I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Yes, that's the gospel. That's the gospel. <laughs> somebody, write, somebody type in, that's, that's the gospel. The gospel. And then another verse you can read uh, to go along with that is uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I, before we turn there, I want, can I read it and amplify it? Oh, quickly? sure. I'm going to read the same scriptures, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through uh, 4. Now, brothers and sisters, let me remind you once again of the good news of salvation, which I preached to you, which you welcome and accepted, and on which you stand by faith. By this faith you are saved, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, mm -hmm. renewed, and set apart for his purpose. If you hold firmly to the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, just superficially and without complete commitment. Mm. That's right. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. For I pass on, for I pass on, to you as the first importance that I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to that which the scriptures foretold, and that he was buried and that he was, and his body raised on the third day according to that which the scriptures foretold, and that he appeared to Cephas Peter, then, okay, that goes into verse yeah. five. Mm -hmm. But um, that complete commitment, mm. Yes. Was that Sonny used to saying fully committed? Mm -hmm. When God doesn't want part, I think I preached a message on God don't want no part-time lover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was the other scripture you wanted? Mm -hmm. Romans. God wants all of us. <laughs> what, what you had, Dr. Robert? Romans 1 and six, 1, 16. Romans 1 and 16. Okay. And you, you can also include 17 to make, make it. A, a, all right. I got it. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of power. God unto salvation mm -hmm. to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, yes. as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Uh, starting at what, 15 was it? Yeah, 15. So, for my part, I am ready and eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel, mm -hmm. for it is the power of God for salvation from his wrath and punishment to everyone who believes in Christ as Savior, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the gospels, the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing from <coughs> and leading to faith. Wow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, springing from faith, leading to faith. Yes. Disclosed in a way that awakens more faith. That is written and foretold remains, uh, for, for, uh, written and forever remains written. The just and upright shall live by faith. Shall live by faith. Yes. So in our conversation earlier we had, with, uh, the book was speaking of the way we are able to endure before it says, because we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. We don't walk by our senses. We walk by the word of God. That's our walk. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, see, it's measured not by, not by man, by Jesus Christ. So we have to be sure that we, see, our thing is to please Jesus Christ. That's, right. That's our thing is to please him. Mm -hmm. That's our whole desire to please him. Because we realize, we realize without a doubt, 
Would he be it for us already? Amen. So it took a little faith. I had a little faith. I said, let me look at this. Let me talk about what this, this Jesus stuff yes. they're talking about. Well, they said, uh, as a grain of a mustard seed. Yes. So, yeah, just take a little bit of faith. But then, look at this. God gives all, every man, every woman, every child, every boy, every girl, a measure of faith. Because the same it, measure. Yeah. It's a measure. Yeah. Not a certain, like, you got some, a measure, I got a measure. Yeah, no, measure. it's the same, a measure of faith. <laughs> That means faith that if, like when we came in, we sat down in these chairs. We had faith to believe that these chairs are going to hold us up. When y'all came in and sat down on them benches, y'all didn't go and check them and make sure the screws was in tight. Y'all just sat y'all self down because you had faith to believe. Yeah, when you go to get in your car, you have faith to believe that if you got gas, then it's going to crack up. You I know gas getting a little scarce now. So. So some of y'all be out, y'all faith to switch. Y'all be having faith, <laughs> faith to believe that it's on E, but it's still going to crack up. I don't have that kind of faith. I've, I've, been, I've been in that place where I know I ain't have no gas. And I say, Lord, you know I got to get from here up to Crystal River. And I'm looking at my old raggedy truck. And it's, it's not just on E, it's leaning. <laughs> and I say, I got to get to work. I got there with, on fumes. God is a good God. It didn't yeah, cut man. off. It didn't cut off one time. So Actually, it ran, it ran like brand new. <laughs> So it did. But that day when I got off of work, though, it did crank up. <laughs> you got back home. <laughs> and had to, borrow, had to borrow a couple of dollars. <laughs> and God showed favor in that, too. But in our, in our getting understanding of the power of God and who God is within us, understanding that God is not a um, 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 something that we can just call on when we are in distress. But we can call on him at any time. Amen. And the thing is, it's not that we can, we should. Amen. We should have a relationship with Amen. him. We should have a positive That's right. relationship with him. Amen. When I read the scriptures of Adam and Eve, when they say that God was in the cool of the evening, mm. walking through the Garden of Eden, looking for Adam, Adam. and Eve. Yes. Why? Because he didn't create them just to be alone. He created them to have a relationship That's with right. them. And this was not just, Amen. he just happened to be walking through. This was an every so often thing that yes. God would do to come and minister, talk with his creation, to give Adam instructions about everything. Remember now, Adam named every animal. Fellowship. Every beast, every plant. Yes. All, this is all, this is, this is what he did. Because the earth was without, we didn't know nobody. Well, okay, that's a fish, that's a whale, mm -hmm. that's a micro, that's a mullet, um, that's a catfish, that's an alligator, and that's a crocodile. He, he had a full job. Nobody really, they don't know. They, yeah. they, they hypothesize. How long Adam was on the earth before Moses is given the revelation about the, the Garden of Eden and those things. Remember now, Adam didn't write the book, mm -hmm. right? Right. Moses wrote the book through the Holy Spirit. Revelation. That's right. And he wrote what God allowed him to hear. I'm sure that there was a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. that went on that we would never know about. But you know, I can ask the question when I get to heaven. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying if, when I get mm -hmm. to heaven. You got to know that you got the Holy Ghost, that you already got your ticket. I got a gold ticket. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Why? Because he said the streets are paved with gold, <laughs> and that's what I'll be walking on. So <laughs> I got me a gold ticket. <laughs> May I? Um, so we was talking about the mind of Christ. I wanted to read the scripture, uh, Philippians two, one through five. I think this is important to understand the mind of Christ. Um, this is the amplified version. Therefore, if there is any encouragement or comfort in Christ, as there certainly is in abundance, mm -hmm. if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship that we share in the spirit, if there is any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind having the same love towards one another, knitted together in spirit, 
intent on one purpose mm -hmm. and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel, the good news regarding salvation through faith in Christ. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit through factual motives or strife, but with the attitude of humility being neither arrogant nor self-righteous. Uh-oh. Mm. <laughs> self-righteous. Regarding <laughs> others as more important than yourself. Yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have the same attitude mm -hmm. in yourself which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example in selfless humility. Who, although he exalt, ex existed in the form and unchanged essence of God, mm -hmm. as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, we're not... Ooh. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not going to go off on that one. But empty himself without renouncing any or distinguishing any deity, but also temporarily giving up that I would express the divine equality or his rightful deity by assuming the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He became completely human but was without sin, mm -hmm. being fully God and fully man. I think that's the goal. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're striving to do by having the mind of Christ, by studying his, his, his word, his teachings, his, his, his actions. Um, <coughs> I mean, if you think about it, if I treat you like I want to be treated, I'm not going to steal from you because I'm not going to steal from myself. Right. I'm not going to talk about you because I'm not going to talk about myself. I will hope so. <laughs> well, that's the idea, right? Self-preservation. If I'm whatever I don't want done to me, why am I going to do it to you? But the scripture tells us to do unto others as what? You would have them do unto you, not yeah. as they do to you. Yeah, as you would have them <laughs> do I'm, unto you. I have a scripture. <coughs> read um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4, 14 through 16, please. First Corinthians. Two, First Corinthians two, two uh -huh. fourteen through sixteen. Fourteen through sixteen. Okay. But the nature, I just amplified the nature. No. Huh? Said First Corinthians. Yes. Yeah, uh, Say, but then. First, First Corinthians. Right. Chapter 2, verse 14. Right. This is the Amplified. It starts by, um, okay. let me see. But the natural, okay. Let me see. Okay. I misspoke. But the natural unbelieving man does not accept the things, the teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness, absurd and mm -hmm. illogical to him. And he is incapable of understanding them. Because they are spiritually discerned and appreciated. And he is unqualified to judge spiritual matters. Mm -hmm. But the spiritual man, the spiritual mature Christian, judges all things, questions, examines, and applies what the Holy Spirit reveals, yet is himself judged by no one. The unbeliever cannot judge and understand the believer's spiritual nature. For who, who has known the mind and purpose of the Lord as so as the to instruct him <laughs> who has <what? laughs> known the mind and the purpose of the lord mm -hmm. so as to instruct him. <coughs> but we have uh oh mm -hmm. we have the mind of christ Amen. to be guided by his thoughts and purpose right. what and is his purpose and how do you have the mind of christ okay that's right. You have the mind of Christ through 
the gift that he has given. Because he says, as the same mind that is in Christ Jesus, yes. let it be in you. Yes. Let it. Let it. Again, conscience. Again, free will. Again, your ability to judge between good and evil, right and wrong. Sin, sin will make you stupid. <laughs> Amen. Say, Pastor, what, what you mean? Well, okay, Adam and Eve, they knew everything about the garden. They knew what trees not to, not to go to. They knew what trees that God told them not to, right? So if they knew all of this, when they ate from the forbidden tree, that fruit made them stupid. Amen. Because all they had to do was go over to the other tree of life that says the leaves on that tree are good for the healing of what? Of the land. The nation, the land. Amen. They could have gotten all of that toxic unforgiveness because repentance had not come into place yet. Uh, that's a whole different Bible yes. study. Amen. Repentance had not come into place yet in the Garden of Eden. They didn't know nothing about repenting. Right. Because there was no sin in them. There was no reason for repenting. But the conniving um, effects of the lie that the liar, the chief liar, yes. put in a place of awareness mm. because he picked his time to come to well, introduce sin. Yeah. He did not introduce it to Adam. Adam had been in the earth a while before God said that it is not good for man mm -hmm. to be alone. Then the enemy, Satan, Lucifer, himself knowing of the things of God because he was in heaven. He was, people are going to get mad at me about this, uh, but it's true. <laughs> Do you know that Satan was in heaven when God created earth? He still goes to heaven. Yeah. It actually yeah, went, yeah he went with Job. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to understand, Satan is not unaware of the deity of God and what God created. Amen. He wanted to be God. He wanted to be Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Luke. Yes. <laughs> Luke. No, we ain't try to do a, a, a quafecta. <laughs> you know, right. we ain't try to do that. God like, no, we, we good. <laughs> the three of us, we good. We <laughs> lose the, really, we good. I have already made you more beautiful than any other angel. Dude, what more you want? Why are you so greedy? Come on, man, just stay in your place. Still, go, go, go play some music. That's what you do. But he understood what God had done. He was there when God created, when God said, let there be. Lucifer was with the angels. He was there. With That's the right. angels. He was a chief angel. Mm -hmm. There are some theologians that say that God actually sent those angels down to do certain things. As he said, let there be, he caused them to do certain things. Things in creation to make those things happen. They just, Moses just didn't, he didn't give all the finite things that he told them to do. Because now we see even after that, um, that the, the, the Bible says the sons of God, mm -hmm. right, came down and mm -hmm. slept with mm -hmm. the women. Mm -hmm. Now you say, well, were those angels? In that aspect, yes, it's talking about angels, but fallen angels. Oh, angels. oh yeah. Not heavenly Celestial. The seed angels. Right. So that's how we had giants upon the earth and iniquity and that, that, that continued. Goes back to the scripture that says that we should let Satan take advantage of us. The sin in the world causes us to be taken advantage of by sin. And the only way that we can regain our authority is through the indwelling and the possession of the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to send it back to you. A comforter. While I'm not here to be the one that keeps you in line, to put ears back on, to heal you, to correct you, to cause you to stop being thieves and murderers and drunkards, even though you my posse. Yeah, the disciples, they was a, they was a wicked band of people, boy. They got some issues, just like y'all and us <laughs> got issues now. God came for those with issues because he is one that takes the ish out of you. <laughs> Somebody well, catch Jesus that <laughs> taught us how to deal with that too. Yeah. Right? When, the, 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 when the, you know, after he was fasting for 40 days in the wilderness, and Satan comes to him to tempt him. And how did Jesus respond with the word of God? Mm -hmm. 
and on every occasion. So if you don't know what to do, know what to do. You got to have some word <laughs> to, to, to combat the tricks of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And they are tricks. What's that, what's that commercial uh, to come up with the serial tricks of the kids? <laughs> Tell the devil, say, look, devil, I ain't no kid. I'm a child, and I'm a child of the king. So you need to recognize. Amen? Amen. <laughs> well, beloved, we are, um, we are beyond our time again. Um, it is 8.15, and we have been trying to stay on the schedule. But note that we are back in <coughs> service. We are back in the house. And we thank God for those who came out. I see one of my good friends that came back in. <laughs> um, but he, he, he's here with us tonight. But we, um, we are progressively getting back into all of our in-house services. We understand that with COVID and everything, the, the, the way that the church is established and set up has totally taken a, a, a total turn. But we are able to, to reach out through our social medias. But we, as the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of the saints. Yes. So we want to see your smiling faces. We want to see and have you to come to interact with us. Um, we didn't ask any questions and we didn't have the audience to, to, um, to, um, to interact with us. But we are going to get back to that. Um, and if some of you are online, um, interact online. Ask those questions. Um, make those comments, and we are going to be having someone um, in the future of, of, of our progressively moving forward with our Bible studies, someone we'll have designated to actually um, get your questions, and if you have questions, they will make sure that they text them to us, and then we will um, do in our service, and even if we're in-house, we'll have a mic, um, and we'll take it out to those who are here. If we have questions, and we open up a certain section within the Bible study to ask questions, and to have a conversation other than just um, us teaching, but we want to interact in our Bible study. That's going to be the next phase of our Bible studies, that we come to the point that when we come into this house, that we come into this place as a place of knowledge and understanding. This is the holy library, and we got the greatest librarian in the world, which is Jesus Christ, who gives us the correct understanding, revelation, interpretation, and gives us um, the translation of the word of God through the spirit of God. Amen. So beloved, as we always let you know, uh, we are here on every Wednesday at 7 p.m. live on our Facebook and our YouTube page. And we will also be here on every Sunday on those same two um, social media pages and in-house. We have opened up the church for everything. Our youth department is going to begin having our, our youth classes um, even beginning this Sunday. We're going to make sure that we have opportunity for our youth um, to have their classes on Sunday um, as well as Sunday school. Somebody say Sunday school. Sunday. Like we say in our church, the best school is Sunday school. <laughs> so come to Sunday school at 930. The doors will be open at about um, 915, 930. Uh, Sunday school will start. We have our men's class, our women's class. We will have our young adults and our children's classes here in the house. And at 1030, we will prepare to come back together and prepare for our 11 a.m. worship service. This Sunday is Missionary Sunday, and our missionaries, as always, are prepared to celebrate um, worship. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm so good on the... This is Father's Day. Thank you, Sister Harry, for reminding me. This Sunday will be Father's Day. I've, 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 um, I got so much going on. Father's Day, and, and um, our chairman of our deacon's board, um, Deacon Brown, has um, prepared our service, and you don't want to miss it because our very own <laughs> Reverend Boyd will be our speaker for um, yeah. Father's Day. Yeah. Amen. And we're just gonna come and celebrate. Um, I, this, this is my brother, and, and I love him to life. All of my brothers, I love you guys to life. And um, when we asked him, he didn't even give us any any um, static. He just says, "Okay, all right." That's that's someone who who doesn't mind sharing and breaking bread, and and knows what his gift is for the body of Christ. Amen. And fathers. And parents and sons and daughters, if you don't do anything else, like my dad used to tell the young people, if you can't do nothing but just get a piece of paper and write Happy Father's Day on it, give it to your dad. 
Amen. Give it to your father. Give it to someone in some male in your life who has been a father figure because all fathers aren't biological. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's a lot of baby daddies, but a father. Oxman. I'm going to let him pray. Yeah. <laughs> Just come on Sunday. Join us right here. Uh, this, what they say, same bat channel, same bat station. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right here on the same network at Prayer Tower Church of God in Christ, Church on the Move for God on the campus here at 1137 37th Street South in St. Petersburg, Florida. 33705. You, we have our Givelify, we have our likes. Like the page, share the page, tell those who aren't churched and aren't learned, those who do not have a relationship with God. Let them know that there is a church down south in Florida that is doing the work and the will of God transparently. We only want you to have an opportunity to enjoy eternal life by having an opportunity to get the promise that God has promised us through the Holy Ghost, through the Holy Spirit, through the promise that Jesus told us that he would send back to us. So, beloved, until the next time, look at somebody even in your house and say, we love you. There ain't love nothing you can do you. about it. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. See you Sunday. Amen. All right.